Hey there, if you are a wedding photographer or are trying to become a wedding photographer, it's inevitable that you are eventually going to work with a videographer. Hello. Videographers can be great to work with. It can also be really challenging. And so I'm gonna teach you today with the help of Ty, because he is a videographer, how you can make it work for both of you so that it's a beautiful experience and you can make your couple happy. Roll the intro. Roll the intro, Ty. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my good friend Ty. This Hello. is a place where we like to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you into the behind the scenes of our everyday life. I'm glad you're here. Ty and I have been working together for years. Long, long, long time. time. Long time. Um, we like to call ourselves the dream team because when Michael and I and him and Ash get to work together on a wedding day, it really is a dream situation because we have learned as a professional videographer, um, and professional photographers, we know exactly what each other needs and we can work around each other and we can do it quickly and efficiently and our clients have a blast. We realize though, because we don't just work with one another, we work with other people. Sometimes that can be a great experience and sometimes it can just be really challenging. So we're gonna share what we have learned that works so well between us, not just because we're friends and we've been friends for a long time, um, but because we have established patterns as friends, as coworkers on, the, on these wedding days that really has played into why it works so well, so. Yeah, and I can't, we can't promise you that this is gonna work for every single scenario. There are just, sometimes people are just difficult to work with. Um, yeah. On both sides, I've, we, my wife and I, we used to shoot photography professionally as well, and we've worked with some really bad videographers, and we've also worked with some photographers who are just not very nice either. So yeah. what we're gonna share with you today are some things that you can do to kind of give it your best effort to try and make the experience as best as possible for you and for your couple, but it's not, Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes you just have people who are just difficult to work with and that's unfortunate, but it's really important as a photographer or a videographer to not be the difficult person to work with because you won't get referrals yeah. if you're difficult to work with. So yes. this is gonna be beneficial for you across the board. Um, so here we go, we're gonna dive in. We have five tips that should help at least you can say that you tried. All right, so tip number one is to remember the objective. Like, why are you there? You are there because you need to serve a bride and groom who paid you a decent amount of money, and there's a number one goal to pursue. You want to create a beautiful gallery of images from a photography perspective, and they need to capture the wedding day and film it beautifully. So we have been in scenarios so many times where we were working with a videographer, not Ty, of course, um, and they're doing some pretty crazy stuff. Like um, whether they're standing in front of everyone at a ceremony and blocking people's views, whether they're telling the couple to do really cheesy stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, you're eating into my portrait time. Even when these things are happening, you can't show that you're disgusted with them in front of the couple. I have seen people do this. They, in front of the bride and groom, they're trying to make the bride and groom realize, hey, I don't know who you hired, but they're crazy. You don't want the bride and groom, they, they probably already realize that. You don't need to make it Aware, make them aware of it. Yeah, don't make it worse. Um, yeah. We'll get to that for a little further down. But yeah, you want to make sure that you remember when you walk in, I, I wanted to title this one, leave your ego at the door, right? Yeah. It's not about you. It's right. not about the photographer. It's not about the videographer. It's really about the couple yeah. and giving them the best experience possible. So you may have to do things a little bit differently than you normally would do them. You may not like the way that somebody else is doing their thing. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you're able to get the photos that you need, yes. they can get the video that they need. The, the yes. couple has a really great experience and that they will always remember their wedding day because that's the most important thing is that they have a really seamless memory of their wedding day and that they don't remember the, the videographer. videographer and the photographer fighting. Yes. Right. We don't I, want that. I would also just say really quick, that maybe another way to view this is it there can't be a power struggle. Yes. And I think that's why people start feeling intimidated is they feel like, oh, that, that person's gonna take over during portrait time or there, it's not, you can't show that to a bride and groom. And it's best if you can remember the ultimate goal of the day and not even have a power struggle to begin with. So point number two is gonna be to try to understand the differences between photo and video from a technical perspective. Right. Now what videographers are after is very different from what photographers are after. Some things are similar, right? So if the light is good for photography, it's probably gonna be good for a video, but there are 
are some things that are different. And the right. more that you can understand that as a photographer, the more sympathetic maybe you're going to be, or the maybe the more you'll be able to work with the videographer and kind of understand certain parts of the day. An right. example I like to give would be during toasts, right? So for photography, yes, you want to capture the toast and it's important. You want to have the best toast photos that you can possibly produce. However, it's not going to make or break your gallery, right? You're not going right. to you're not going to be featured in Style Me Pretty because you did or did not have great photos of the toast. However, for video, it's really, really important for us because the audio from those toasts helps to drive our entire film. So for us, have, sometimes we may have a kind of what seems like a crazy toast setup, right? But that's because it's really important to our film. So understanding right. those little nuancy differences between photography and video are going to just go a long way for so you knowing, okay, this is something that's really important to them. So I can kind of take the back seat on this. Yes. And also vice versa, like I, as a videographer, Trying and like I know that details are really important for Caitlin and that mm -hmm. it's really difficult for her to get those done in the in a short amount of time. So I try and do my best to stay as hands off during the details as possible because right. I don't really use the detail shots very often in my films. It's not right. that important to me. And and I would say also there's things like I I know that he doesn't shoot vertically. Everything's horizontal. So when I'm setting up the bride getting ready, I can't just shoot in a, in a situation where, oh, I'm just gonna shoot all vertically because there's stuff on the floor. Now I should probably think a little bit about his perspective. It's really what we're asking you to do is to be empathetic, yeah. is to think of the other person um, and to realize that when you start thinking of the other person and, and that's like a mutual exchange, then all of a sudden the day is like this beautiful, like back and forth, like, I'm giving a little bit to you, you're giving a little bit to me. And it's really marketing because you can tell brides about them. They can tell brides in the future about you. And so when you have empathy, you think about one another's needs, all of a sudden it's a beautiful relationship instead of a battle. And the only way you can really have empathy is if you understand the other yes. person. So I'm gonna give you a few of like the biggest things that I think are different that in case you like don't work with videographers very often, you may need to know about. So the first one is gonna be audio. Like I kind of mentioned, audio is one of the most important things to our films. So a lot of times um, when there are things happening in the bridal suite, we'll maybe be turning the music down, um, capturing the audio of them reading their notes is really, really important to us. So sometimes I'll ask the photographer to photograph selectively and maybe not just be like wailing click, click, away click. on their shutter during the note reading. Yeah. Like just understanding like audio in general is very important to us, which is something you probably aren't thinking about as much right. as a photographer. Um, when we are capturing things happening, whereas for photography, you're capturing like that single moment of, you know, like the tear falling or the kiss or whatever. For video, we're thinking of the entire sequence from start to finish. We need to capture it basically in its entirety. So what for you may not matter those in between moments are you don't you're not thinking as much about where you're standing or what you're doing or whatever those are the moments that we are trying to capture so our needs for things like the first look and mm -hmm. um processionals recessionals those types right. of things are a little bit different in that we're trying to capture them in their entirety we have a lot of yeah. gear to set yeah. up most of the time so we a lot of we're gear. moving a little bit slower um it takes us a little bit longer we can't just on a, on a drop of a hat be like, oh yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to go do this new thing. So just giving us maybe a few minutes heads up and something we really love is if you offer to help carry some of our gear, we will love you forever. And Which I never do Starling because I've basically, Michael, Michael will help. Michael's great. I've been yes. pregnant for the last four wedding seasons. So I don't really, I had on help with that. Is if you're not pregnant and you have the ability to help. Pick up some bags. Even if, you just, if it's just like one thing. Like, hey, yeah. can I carry that one thing, that one tripod? What, if you have an extra hand, that makes a huge, yes. huge difference and we'd really appreciate it. Um, and then the last thing to note is that there is no, when we're shooting video, there's no raw for video. So we have to get things a lot more perfect in camera. So mm -hmm. like we can't be photoshopping things out. Um, right. We have to make sure that the light is really good. And our dynamic range isn't quite as good as photography, quite honestly. So Sometimes there's certain lighting scenarios for photo that work really great, but for video just like aren't really plausible. So just being aware of those, like some of those mm -hmm. technical differences is gonna help you be a better teammate to the videographer on a wedding day. So third thing to remember is that it's gonna be in your best interest to over communicate about things throughout the wedding day. So every single wedding day is different. Every reception location, every portrait location, lighting, Everything's different. And so you're going to need to have a game plan. You're going to need to talk about with one another. You don't want to assume that the other person knows what you're going to be doing. And I think this is when a lot of times, at least for me, a lot of times I can gauge 
how easy it's going to be with working with a videographer when I start this conversation. Yes. Um, people are either shocked that I'm asking because most people don't, um, or two, they already have in their mind what they're doing and they're not going to budge. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. You still want to ask and you still want to introduce the concept of, hey, we can work together. It'd be great if we work together. And I've actually seen some very um, hard-hearted videographers who wouldn't give me the time of day when I went to them and said, hey, what do you need here? Like, what's your game plan? This is what I was thinking. Can we work together? It's all of a sudden like the intensity and, and the, the stone face uh, interaction that I've had all morning, that kind of drifts away. And all of a sudden they start to soften a little bit, you know? So when you show them, hey, trying to communicate here, what's the game plan? A lot of times it can change the whole vibe and the tension can die down. Yeah, and the earlier you can do this in the day, the better. So like yeah. what I like to do, like very first thing on the day is like obviously like introduce yourself, try and talk to them, just try and be friendly, just yeah. be like a generally nice person. Yes. But then also like, hey, just so you know, I always say as a photographer throughout the day, like I want you to lead right when it comes to portraits in the majority of the day, you know, I you know, I just want you to know that like I'm totally down with you being in control. Just kind of like setting the ground rules. Like, hey, this yeah. is how I normally work. Hey, I'm very... I have this specific type of style or anything just in general to kind of just like establish that asking questions. It's always good to ask questions. And then right. I like to have what I call like a powwow as often as possible. So yes. like anytime you're going to a new, a new lighting situation, honestly, any new part of the day, having like a little side conversation of like, Hey, okay. So for this first look, I was thinking about doing it in the front yard under the Oak tree, facing that way. Does that work for you? And if I'm like, oh, that's how I can work. It's going to be too backlit. It's going to be completely blown out. What if we pivoted and had it this way instead? And da -da 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 -da. Right. That's great. Okay. So if when they do the walk up, like, are you going to hold her dress like all the way up or are you going to let them walk? like, just like as many of those things that you can kind of cover mm -hmm. ahead of time, the better. Cause the worst thing that can happen is you start doing the first look and then you realize, oh no, like you're completely in my shot or I'm completely right. in your shot or like, I can't get what I need. And then we're like, fighting and then we get frustrated Awkwardly and then trying like, to talk right, during like, a first you're, you're, look yeah, oh. like that kind of like so the more of those conversations you can have and even if you feel like yeah. this is ridiculous like i'm being or over communicating that's better than not under having a plan right because once it starts you can't, you can't stop. stop right so right. over communicate as many times you can have those little powers as possible and also be willing to be flexible which leads me to my third point which is to be flexible, right? If you're a photographer and you're used to working by yourself without a videographer during the wedding day, it's gonna look different. Like there's just no way around it. It's going to be a little bit different um, than what you're used to when you have complete control over everything. You're gonna to have to give it up certain areas here or there. You're gonna to have to compromise in certain ways. Right. Now it is important to know where you can be flexible with and when you can't be, but you need to be willing to say like, you know what, we're gonna do things a little bit differently today, but as long as we all walk away with the photos that we need and the videos that we need, then I'm, I'm happy. Right. And I would say overall, when you're being flexible, that is noticed by other people, right? Mm -hmm. It's noticed by the bride and groom. And being flexible also comes with um, more professionalism. Like if I have an idea of like, I, I, I want to do this, I want this shot, videographer needs something else. Because of my experience level and because of my comfort in posing and lighting, I can normally find a way to make it work. We have a great system where if they need something, I can still shoot alongside of them, not get in their way, and I'm still getting great shots and I don't have to do anything. But a lot of times people shut down, they, they don't want to be flexible, they get mad at the videographer and they lose opportunities where they could still be shooting over their shoulder, but not interfering with what they had planned. So this one kind of ties into be flexible, but the fourth point is going to be to pick your battles, right? right. So obviously you do want to be flexible and you want to be as cooperative as possible and you want to be a team player yes. but you also need to know like when it is important to like hold your ground and be like no this is something i cannot give up and when you're like you know what this isn't really ideal for me but right. i'm not going to fight you on it like again right. if you know that it's not important if it's if it's not as important to you as it is to them maybe you let them lead right a lot right. of times i've gotten into um power debates with photographers over like where the toaster should stand, right? They're like, I always do it this way. I always want them to stand like this. And I, and I might say, well, that doesn't really work for video. And I understand why it's better for you. But like, that's one of those things where we both are right. right. We're not really, neither one of us is wrong, right. but like, it's better. It's like, do you want to have that battle or not? And like knowing when to pick your battles is really important. Example for this for me uh, is that, you know, when I have a wedding day where we don't have a lot of time, and we finish a first look and the videographer's like, all right, we're gonna reenact that again. And I'm like, no, we don't have time. I have found myself, I just have to remind myself like, how long is this actually gonna take? 
probably two to three minutes. And it nice. goes yeah. back to the concept of like, they need a broader picture. Like I got the shot of her walking to him, but they need to like pan it without me in the background. Like they need something so different. I have got to pick my battle here and just say, you know what? Yes, of course, get what you need. I'm going to be empathetic, get what you need. It's really not going to, it's not going to take away that much portrait time. So picking your battles uh, comes back to showing empathy and finding a balance of like, they need this. I'm going to let them have this because that's really important to them. And hopefully they'll return the favor down the line. Yeah. And knowing like in that time, instead of sitting in for two minutes being frustrated, you and should just be like shooting. thinking about how mad you are, yeah. be shooting or take a, take a water break, go scout out the next location, like use the time that yes, it's different. And normally you would just like move right into the next thing, but think like, okay, how can I make the most of these two minutes that I'm losing from portrait time? What can I do to make this up? Maybe that's like, you're going to wrangle the bridal party. Or you're going to do something with that time. Like don't just stand there and be like frustrated, Right. figure out how, okay, I'm being flexible. Yes. We're going to make this work. Like, yeah. I'm picking my battles here. I'm going to let them have this two minutes to do this thing that's important to them, but I'm going to make the most of it instead of being frustrated. So the last tip is you want to have grace with yourself and with the other person, the, the videographer, if you are a photographer yourself. So if you're working with each other for the first time, um, it can either be a great experience or it could be really challenging. And you want to have grace for the situation. So when I say that, what I mean by that is having grace means recognizing, hey, that was catastrophic that did not go well but we're going to move on to the next event have some grace over that and we're going to move forward if something negative happens at the beginning of the day it's very easy to have a chip in your chip on your shoulder the entire rest of the day mm -hmm. and it can really ruin things um for me i have found that a lot of times the beginning of the day can start rough because everyone's nervous mm -hmm. everyone's on edge no one knows what to expect and if you just have it in your mind like man that person seems really pissed that person seems really like not approachable a lot of times if i give them a chance i have grace for the situation by the time we get to the first look or portrait time they're, they're warming up to us, right? right? Sometimes they don't warm up. I mean, there's literally a Reddit thread, I think, where you could search Caitlin James and some videographers like, have you ever worked with her? She's crazy. And, <laughs> and I realized like my way of shooting is not great, but what that videographer didn't realize is that if he had just learned to communicate with me and had shot over my shoulder, he could have had seamless transitions of the couple walking up the hill. Like I could have given him movement. Like I could have directed all of the posing. Which I love, by the way. <laughs> He doesn't have to do any posing because I'm just constantly going from one thing to the next. But because he didn't communicate with me and he didn't give us a chance to become friends, he just got mad, stood off on the side and kind of just counted it as a loss because he couldn't work with me. Now, if we had had a conversation, I could have had grace. He could have had grace. We could have made things work seamlessly. But yeah. he had a bad attitude. Yeah, you're meeting for the first time, most likely, on a high pressure situation for everybody. Stuff is going to happen, right? Someone's going to get in your shot. They might bump into you. They might accidentally walk through your frame, whatever. Like things happen on both sides. And a lot of times the way that cameras work, you don't even realize you've done it, right? Like that's the time, like you don't realize you're in their shot. Like they're looking at their camera staring like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're standing in my shot. But you don't even realize that you're doing it and vice versa. So it's really important that you're able to like have grace with them and be like, listen, they got in my shot. Maybe it was an accident, whatever, like take the high road, try and give people the benefit of the doubt. Like don't assume that like, oh, all photographers are the worst or all videographers are the worst. They're out to get me. Right. Like they're probably not out to get you. It was probably an accident and you've yes. probably been in their shot some too. Okay. It's like, true. don't escalate the situation. It's going to be okay. Have a little bit of grace. Right. And obviously if it's like they're intentionally doing something, you can tell when somebody, you ask someone to do something and they do the opposite. Right. Like. That's intentional. But again, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight them? Are you going to like yell at them? Like, no, you've got to continue to just like figure out whatever you can do to work around it. To make try and have grace, better. give people the benefit of the doubt. And that's really all you can do. I will say, uh, this is just a little side note. You can train yourself. You can train yourself to think of the other person. I have got, I've had to really work hard. At, like I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll. And then stopping and be like, what do y'all need? Do you need yes. something else? Uh -huh. um, we, we just shot a wedding in Texas. It was beautiful, um, but f amazing videographers that we just loved. They're, they're, they're sweet couple, husband and wife team. And, um, and I found myself throughout the day working with them, just like we worked with, with Ty and Ash and stopping and saying, okay, great. I just got that set of portraits. What do y'all need? Do you need me to do that again? You want me to walk and, and repose them again? And a lot of times I will stand back and I'll use my posing language. I'll use my, um, kind of my directions and the videographers just get to focus on shooting, but they don't have to be 
talking to the couple, I'm just redoing what I just did. And mm -hmm. it's such a gift to them because they can do something more creative because they're not worrying about instructions. Right. Um, so when you are shooting and, and you have some experience behind you, you can train yourself to think, all right, I just got that done. Oh, wait, 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 they might need something. Let me slow down, Caitlin. And I have had to learn that. Sometimes it's been helpful for Ty to be like, all right, KJ, just slow it down. I'm going to ask you to redo that so that I can get a shot. And it's trained me to recognize what other people need. And so really the, the overall story of this is let's be empathetic and kind people. <laughs> it really um, seems like it should be pretty simple, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but these are just some ways that can really help you form great relationships, get great footage, get great images at the same time, and not kill each other. I, as, as much as I would love to say that it's been a 50-50 split, outside of working with Ty and Ash, most of my videographer interactions are normally, right off the bat, pretty negative. Some of them have come around. Um, some of them have been great from the beginning. Um, but there's a lot of people that have really hardened perspective, perspectives and opinions towards uh, photographers. So I'm hoping that maybe this can help bring some change to that. All right, one little bonus tip. Um, it is really helpful, especially if you've never worked with somebody before, to reach out to them before the wedding day. Yeah. Um, sending them an email, messaging them on Instagram, kind of whatever you feel most comfortable with, whatever kind of fits your vibe the most, but some sort of a communication ahead of time. And again, this is a really great way to kind of set that foundation of kindness and empathy before you get to the wedding day. And also in a like strategic subtle way, set some expectations, right? right. Especially if you've worked with a lot of videographers and you know like, these are some common maybe like issues I run into or some common questions that I have or whatever. You could make, you could theoretically make a templated email that's like, hey, videographer X, I'm really excited to work with you at so-and-so's wedding this coming Saturday, blah, 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 blah. I wanna make sure we can work really well together. Here are some things about the way that I work that you may be interested in knowing. Again, you have to figure out like the best way of like wording this, but I think that you can do it in a way that's really strategic, that's just like, hey, this is how I like to work. I'm really all about posing when it comes to da, da, da. I wanna make sure that you have your time as well. So like, mm -hmm. if you need any time, make sure you like jump in or whatever. Like, again, showing that empathy in this email or showing like, hey, I understand the audio is really important to you. So I'm gonna do my best to stay out of your way during those audio moments of the day. Like anything you can do to yeah. just demonstrate like, hey, I understand where you're coming from. This is where I'm coming from. I really wanted this work to work really well together. So that when you see them for the first time on the wedding day, right. it's not this awkward like, power struggle, whatever weirdness. Yeah, you've or, already talked. And you're already like, you're, you're stressed, like you're past all that. Yeah, you've already talked. The expectations are set. You're all on the right foot. You're, you're ready to rock and roll. Right. I think that can really go a long way. And if you want to see some live examples of us working together on a wedding day, what this yes. actually looks like, because we're talking more about sort of like the philosophy of working together. And we're right. not really talking about like the Logistics, mechanics yes. of actually how do we move? Like, how do we, do we move stand? and shoot portraits of the bride and groom walking side by side and still get good shots? You yeah. can learn that by watching us actually do it through KJL, KJL Access. Access. There are a handful of episodes where we have been filming the wedding that they're filming for KJL Access. It's kind of meta. Um, but we can link those specific ones down below so you can go like watch individual ones where it's me or there's you know usually Other with the videographer how often would you say most of the time i would say 50 to 75 percent of the 70 time, of the time. so like, it's kind of like inception it's like you're watching us film it but we're filming it from a you know yes. it's really fun so. so go check this out the one that comes to my mind is christian and amanda that's a really good one, one to of watch best one of the best weddings either of us has ever shot it was they're a, the best. it's at a castle kind of sort it's of kind of at a castle they're the best we love them um but that's that is a cage all access episode so if you go watch that just pay close attention to like how we interact what we're doing and there's lots of parts in there where you can literally see us having those powwows of like mm -hmm. hey kk what are you gonna do here you right here? so go watch that if you want to see it live in action link below bye bye <laughs>